TV44 presents opening night with the Oakland A's. Hello, everybody. I'm Lon Simmons. Opening night of a baseball season is always a special time. For each club, it's a new beginning, a chance to start from scratch and make a run for the world championship. Dreams are renewed. Hopes are high. And for the Oakland A's, 1983 looks to be a very promising year. But past seasons in the A's colorful history have also given us some thrilling moments from the game's biggest stars, like Gene Tennant. It is Grand Slam Tennant! Gene Tennant has found one over the bleachers. Four more runs are coming in, and Oakland now leads 8-2. Reggie Jackson. Here's Reggie Jackson, and Maddie throws to him. There's a drive deep center field. That baby's really going to charge in it. And there she goes! And Joe Rudy. Rudy leans in out over the plate now. Here's a pitch. Rudy hits one deep. Right center field. Way back. Way back. Way back. There she goes. The A's win the ball game. But long before these current day stars, there were A's players like Sox Seabold, Topsy Hartzell, Tilly Walker, and Ossie Schreckengoss. The A's franchise as we know it today actually took shape just after the turn of the century. Travel back in time with me now, more than 80 years to 1901. President William McKinley was shot in office and replaced by Teddy Roosevelt. New Mexico, Arizona, Alaska, and Hawaii weren't even states yet. And a man named Cornelius McGillicuddy founded the Philadelphia Athletics. Unlike today's owners, Cornelius McGillicuddy, better known as Connie Mack, had things pretty much his way. Not only was he the founder and owner, but also the manager of the A's, setting a record that will never be equal, managing the same club for 50 consecutive years. The A's franchise tonight opens its 83rd season, an exciting history that has produced 12 American League championships and eight World Series titles. Under Connie Mack's watchful eye, it didn't take the A's long to gel into pennant winners. The inaugural season of 1901 saw the A's finish in fourth place. But just one year later, in 1902, while Stanford lost to Michigan in the first ever Rose Bowl, the A's beat the St. Louis Browns for their first American League title. At that time, the established National League didn't consider the American League as an equal. So no World Series was played that season. The A's would have to wait three more years. Philadelphia got its first shot at a World Series title in 1905, but lost to the New York Giants four games to one. That series went down in the books as the best pitch series ever. Five games, five shutouts. Little could it have been known then that these two franchises, both making their World Series debut, would wind up playing side by side here in the Bay Area. It was to be five years before the Athletics were to again win the American League pennant. The year was 1910. The A's became the first team in the American League to win 100 games in a season. And in the World Series, beat the Chicago Cubs for their first World Championship. The following year, 1911, Ronald Reagan was born. The Indy 500 run for the first time. And the Philadelphia A's became the first American League team to win back-to-back -back World Series titles. In the series, the A's getting revenge on the New York Giants by beating them four games to two. The A's that 1911 season were led by Hall of Fame third baseman Frank